Hey guys, uh, today we're going to talk about the Ion Cannon from The Empire Strikes Back. Uh, seen in the film for six seconds, maybe 11 seconds, I don't want to get too carried away here. Uh, the Ion Cannon is one of those things that's like a pretty rare instance lately in the whole studio scale model building scene. In that, it is a subject matter that a lot of people have wanted to make and there's just no reference. Um, and that is not because we haven't been able to see it with our own eyes. I kneeled in front of it because it was on a low shelf, not out of any sort of reverence or prayer. Um, uh, but I, I got to have an audience with it face to face for a good long while, about uh, a year and two years ago. I what, We're in 2021, right? It was right before the pandemic. <laughs> whenever that was um but yeah i found myself staring at this thing uh and could not figure out anything uh new uh from what i had already had uh, available to me um and that is because the model over the years has suffered from an unfortunate chemical reaction we think so it's a 12 inch sphere right uh, that was plated with armor plating, just styrene. And they vacuum formed styrene over top of a ball, cut out shapes, blah, blah, blah. It was made by Ease, um, who on that same trip I had coffee with and talked to him about the model and explained to him what I was doing, uh, to which he then said, you're way over complicating it, <laughs> which I appreciated uh, because we want to make, we being my friend Josh and I, uh, who is handling all of the heavy lifting with uh, a mechanism, which we'll get into later because it's still in the exciting prototype phase. Um, but, you know, we want to make it uh, recoil. Uh, it's like a double recoil when it when it shoots the, the cannon. And then also the whole assembly has to sort of drop into the ball and the hatches have to close. There's three pedals that close. On the original, he said it was just a simple screw mechanism. Um, and we didn't go into any of that. But now we have Arduinos and uh, all sorts of unlimited time <laughs> because it doesn't need to be on a stage for filming. So anyway, getting back to the construction of this thing, um, you know, it was built uh, and then it was paint dressed, painted, and some snow was added. It was filmed, the end. And that's all that model needs to, uh, to do in its life. It's constructed to be used in a movie and after that, not the concern of production, uh, at least not back then. Things have changed. But, uh, you know, it's one job was to do what it did. Uh, so, the way the model looks now in like a good almost half of the surface area, it almost looks like it's like fuzzy, like from mold. Or it almost looks like, uh, you know, it had caught fire, like a pyro detonation. We don't think it's either of those things, uh, but it, basically what we think we're looking at is uh, what happens to baking soda uh, over time with, um, with, with expansion and contraction of, of disparate materials that have been layered. So you've got, what you're looking at is a clear ball, acrylic ball, and then multiple colors of styrene, white, you know, some green, some gray, whatever. Uh, and then it was primed black or a very dark gray then it was painted that whitish color and then it was weathered so that's all the, that's all that material right over top of that they decanted super 77 spray glue it's a spray mount it's a it's an aerosolized glue imagine being able to spray uh like a mist of, of glue artists use it i've used it all my life um but they decanted it which means they sprayed it into a little cup uh so they didn't have to so they could control it better. Then took a, a sort of a probably uh, coarser haired brush, stippled it on the model, and then put on some baking soda snow. Maybe also micro balloons, but um, that was how they achieved the snow look. That baking soda, you know, could attract and lock in moisture uh, and, and then maybe desiccate. And what happens is, you know, it pulls at the surface. And so you get all of these paint layers uh, pulling up into little cups, into little scales maybe, they kind of sort of bend up. So when you're looking at the surface of this model with these little tiny parts everywhere, you can't literally see any of it because it's hiding under this three-dimensional layer of, of material that's pulling up. Um, almost like, a, you know, an old, almost like rust, 
like the way rust will pull up in sheets or or like you see the side of a wet, really old weathered uh, cedar shingle or barn like the side of my house um and uh so that makes identifying the thing nearly impossible we've been staring at this the the, the reference we have for three years two years now and um and i think we're like 70 to 80 percent right uh which is incredible in my opinion um i i had the fortune uh, of hanging out with friends last week uh for the first time in uh, you know a year and a half and uh <laughs> there was a good half a day where my friends ed and chris sat there at a really nice big table at this fancy airbnb we rented uh with some of my model sprues and my in progress ion cannon ball and uh they're you know i trying to id parts and they id'd stuff <laughs> i thought i was like seven or eight parts away from being done and ed's like there's like 10 more and i was like shit so uh what i have settled on is you know the best faith effort on this ion cannon and i'm pretty confident in saying that it's not going to get any better or more refined unless photo surface of this thing from production in 79 i'm sure somebody took like four ways or six ways of this model maybe even more pictures documenting it it's in a flat folder somewhere a negative stack who knows uh it's never percolated to the top um and it's never been published so usually what happens is I'll finish something, I'll put all this blood and sweat and tears into something, and then the next week pictures will be, oh, look what we found, look what finally, you know, got processed over the, over the last 40 years. So in a way, I feel like I'm summoning those photos, and emotionally I'm fine with that, because I know one day I'll rebuild this ball. So anyway, Ion Cannon Ball, 12 inches, punk, sounds like a, sounds like a, a dodgeball. Um, and it's just a 12 inch globe I got from Amazon. Um, yeah, hello. And, uh, I had to pay a not small amount of money to get, uh, vacuum formed styrene plates, uh, you know, that were vacuum formed over top of this to make it much easier to glue all this stuff down because this, you know, is a compound curve. And so that was a dream. That was a great idea. Uh, but, you know, I really don't want to do this very often, plating, uh, you know, a big surface like this. It takes a while. I've noticed I'm wrong in a couple places, and you can only kind of know this uh, unless you, until you've built one. And then you're like, oh, I, I shifted everything a centimeter over or whatever. Um, if you do it digitally then yeah, you can infinitely change stuff. And that's, you know, speaks to the power of 3D modeling. But this was all hand done. Um, so, you know, it's close, but it's not perfect. Um, and I'm fine with that. Uh, because, you know, <laughs> either, either I make this now and I'm happy with it, or it sits unfinished for the rest of my life and I'll never get around to it because I never had, you know, perfect reference. So happy to revisit it one day if I need to but this is more than awesome uh, for now. So this is my personal ball. I have uh, printed, speaking of 3D, I 3D printed a plug on the inside um, just to, for, for static display purposes. And uh, a couple friends really, really, really want to make one too, um, which is understandable again, because no one's done this. And so I thought, eh, maybe I'll get it molded and cast, why not? Um, but I don't want to deal with any of that. So I have a friend who's taking care of it. Um, and you know, he's just gonna like facilitate, um, the gang. So, uh, that's nice. If I make more than one, I won't have to replate another ball. Um, but for my personal one, which is this one, um, I'm going to knock this out once I get this back from him. Uh, and the electronics will fit inside all this stuff. In fact, I'll probably have to cut this back out. Uh, to facilitate it all, but that's okay because, you know, it goes up against a snow base that I'm just going to probably carve out of foam, I guess. Something for later Jason to figure out. So anyway, um, this is just styrene. There's a plastruct uh, ribbed piece right here. Lots of little chips 
and uh, there are pieces from the usual suspects, Morser Carl, uh, 1 700th Junior, I think, um, Flak Cannon, and then there's uh, the rest of the parts, which again, not a lot of stuff. Um, and I will show you that now. Okay, so you got your ball, and this is it. I mean, there there is more that will go into this, but this whole area is so impossible to figure out that I'm leaving it blank for two reasons. One, I'm going to leave it up to my friends to, to put in what they think should go there. And you can just use pieces from a 700th scale, uh, you know, like Shinano or, or Junio or, or Hornet or whatever, and get that in there. Uh, Mobile Wagon was also used in here. Really standard Empire stuff. Um, so... The other reason I'm leaving it blank is because if better pictures do surface, then you can accurize this right off the bat, which is nice. Um, so what I have figured for this is a barrel, and the barrel was originally machined acrylic, and I've made it in two parts so that it's easier to cast. Um, this is a running change for me personally. I, I saw a photo finally that showed the underside and this one little guy is shorter than the rest, uh, which was just irritating enough at the time. I was like, come on, man. Um, and then this just pressure fits into here, which is lovely. And then, and I think it'll hold, yep. And then this outer sleeve goes into here, which fits nicely. This will get clayed up a little bit. Um, so this pretty much represents the barrel at its, you know, like furthest out. So, you know... I would probably cut like this much off so that it's sitting a little further back in the film You know, it's like does this Anyway There you go. That's that and then these are the three petals now when they're closed they look like this and They go over here and that leaves room for this upper and lower site which are constructed out of these raw parts um, and for this particular static representation, I've just made little tabs on them, and they'll just sit here where they're supposed to visually. Um, on my version, these will, you know, slide in and come downward. Um, not a small feat of engineering, but I've got one of the best guys uh, in the world, in my opinion, on it. So that's what that looks like. Um... And that's, that's it. It's a ball. It's a ball gun. You know, Flak 88, Vosper, PT-15, Mobile Wagon, Matilda, um, the Flak 3637, Enterprise Hornet, uh, you know, the huge M577. Um, not an inexpensive model to scratch build, but, uh, you know, it, like, it, it's not... It's, it's been demystified to a degree, which is kind of nice. So yeah, there you go, Ion Cannon. Um, it's finally happening, um, and I think it's a, it's a really great uh, first pass at a build of the thing. And I do look forward in the future to refining this design over the years, like we've done with everything. You know, like you look at that first X-Wing that everybody, f you know, fell in love with and you see it now and you're like, all right, yeah. Um, then you know that, you know, the community has worked to make it better. Uh, and that's like my favorite thing ever. Uh, you know, everybody sharing uh, their skill sets and just making things better and better and upping the game and holy crap. So yeah, that's it for now. Uh, once I get a set of castings back, I will uh, build it up uh, to have a static version for myself. Uh, because the electronic one will take longer, and I'm aiming to have that for Wonderfest 2022, the uh, two-year delayed Empire Strikes Back uh, display that we wanted to do in 2020. <laughs> so, uh, so that's the goal. I don't think it'll be hard to hit, um, and uh, I'm really excited to see even just a static version of this like come to life with the little snow backdrop and everything. So, uh, next time we'll talk about the X-wing.